My God, son of a bitch, what the hell is going on out there? It's a situation, it's a situation that says, fuck me in my ass. I'm opening it up wide and I want you to. That's what the situation is. Because this Colorado cocksucker fucked people around. He stuck it in their ass and he doesn't give a shit. He doesn't give a rat fuck because he's the one that started the wheels to turn the cocksucker son of a bitch. Two ball fucking bitch. Whore motherfucking bitch. Fuck off motherfucking cocksucker bitch. Son of a bitch. I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm, I'm a little upset. I, I, I'm Sammy Sloan. I'm straight out of Southwest Road. Customs, my friend Pete said, don't be wearing that hat today. He's not in a good mood. He said, I can't wear my beautiful hat. I gotta wear the southwestern style hat. It's a real fucking bitch is what it is. But you know what? I got my hat on. I got the hat on that Toby put on because he wanted me to wear the fucking hat. And he told me, Sammy, I can't do the introduction to this video. I need you to do it. I'm just so frustrated and pissed off about the situation I, I, that he's taking it personal. My friend Pete's went out on the limb. He's taking the situation to a personal level now to see justification done. Why is my friend Pete doing this? Why is my friend Pete taking himself on the limb to do this? Because my friend Pete has a big heart. My friend Pete is the guy that says, if you lie to me, you stole from me. Liars are worse than thieves because liars don't steal material items. Liars steal your trust. Liars steal your, your behavior of natural humanity that can rise from the situation. But does the rest of the world really give a rat fuck about all that? Hell no. They don't give a fuck because the only thing that matters to them is the mighty fucking dollar. My friend Pete's gonna call this fucking clown act over there. Gonna call this bozo, this blinky, blinky the clown guy out there in Denver, Colorado. Gonna see if he can get a little justification done and see what the situation is. He's not a happy guy, I can tell you that. I think that he's done what he can do and he ought to let it go. He ought to let it go and just say, you know what? I've tried. I've done the best I can do, and that's all I can do. But he's not that way. My friend Pete's the type of guy that gets you done and does it right. Take a lesson and learn from the situation. Take a lesson and tell yourself, it's okay. I got to do it. It's my journey in life to do things right and to get her done. Take a step back for a little while. Look at the big picture. See what the ball of wax has for you to melt off the candlestick. This is Sammy Salami straight out of Miami. I'm an edit guy. I'm the one that edits all these films and I gotta sit here minute after minute after minute after minute after minute and put up with all this bullshit motherfucking crap. So enjoy the video. See what you can learn from the video and nurture the video. Because the video is your friend. We'll see you later. We'll see you on the flip side. We'll see you on the keep on trucking side. Straight out of my head, you cocksucker. I can't even do that because I ain't got my beautiful hat on. It's bullshit. It's what it is. It's bullshit. I want my slits, my liquor. I want my McDonald's hamburger. But I can't. I'm wearing this fucking hat now. This fucking ugly ass bullshit hat. How long is this gonna go on? How long is my friend Pete gonna be in this fucking cocksucker piece of shit? Man? I gotta go. Gotta go. I'll see you later. <laughs> Son of a bitch, it's your cocksucker. What's up, Richard? Where are you at in Australia? I'm in Perth, WA. I'm on the far west coast. I'm on like uh, Melbourne and Gold Coast, uh, all east coast. Yeah. On the west, complete other side of the country. Oh, okay. Uh, we 
we got a situation with this fucking truck, dude. That truck, I don't know. Did he send you? I need to know if he sent you. How many pictures of that truck did he send you? The photos he sent me are the same ones that I've sent you. Two pictures? About, uh, no, I had about five, but the, the one, other ones were just, uh, there was nothing of the roof. I asked him for more photos, but... There were, he, he was always saying, I oh, he didn't, he didn't okay. have another camera that he could, you know, all right. crap. Yeah, all right, let me explain it to you, but I don't want to keep you on the phone. You're paying for this long-distance call. Can you hear me good? Yeah, I can hear you good, yep. Okay, let me explain to you real square, bud. That fucking truck has either been rolled or it has been put in storage and stuff has been stored on top of it. The roof on that thing, and I'm getting ready to upload pictures on my website, the roof on that thing is crushed in. The only way to fix that truck is we're going to have to find a 59 through 62 Ford truck, and we're talking a full-size truck, and find two of them with two roof skins to splice them in and use them. Now, I called this cocksucker up about an hour and a half ago and I cussed the motherfucker out and told him that truck was a piece of shit. It wasn't worth eight thousand fucking dollars, and you better come up with some motherfucking money to refund this guy in Australia. We looked at the truck. We saw the truck. I'm gonna be honest with you. The truck's a pile of shit. Is this truck really, really worth restoring? I don't even think the owner knows what the fucking truck looks like. The guy out in Australia, Mr. Fucking Australia, that cocksucker. I don't even think he knows what the fuck is going on with the fucking truck. What the real situation is, is it all started with this fucking guy out in Colorado. Mr. Truck Guy, Colorado fucking scumbag, piece of shit, motherfucker that ripped off this other fucking guy 10,000 miles away. It has become a personal vendetta now to fucking solve the solution or solve the situation with the solutions that we have at our fingertips. I am so furious about this fucking deal that I have personally involved myself now to the point that satisfaction has to be fucking done. We're gonna call this fucking guy and uh, get shit straight real fucking fast. I'm gonna try to catch him early in the morning and see if he'll fucking answer. It's seven o'clock out there, it's eight o'clock here. We're gonna see what the fuck goes on. Yeah, what's up? Well, I can tell you what. Before I start talking to you, I am going to explain something, and you're going to listen real close, okay? That truck is non-fucking restorable. Do you understand what I'm talking about? That fucking truck has been rolled. The fucking top on the truck is crushed. That truck is a piece of shit. It is fucking junkyard material just where it came out of your fucking backyard. Now, you think about that for about another fucking hour and a half. I'm going to let you wake up and think about it real fucking strong. And then you and me are negotiating a situation to get some fucking money back on this piece of shit fucking truck. Do you understand? Okay, good. I'm going to tell you again. You think about it real fucking hard, motherfucker. That truck is a piece of shit. I've been doing this shit for 40 fucking years. That truck is a pile of shit. Now, I'm calling you back in an hour and a half when I'm calmed down, and we are going to negotiate a situation of partial refund on this piece of shit you call a collector fucking item. I will call you back. Answer your fucking phone! The truck is gonna take $50,000 to restore. This truck is a pile of fucking shit. To restore this fucking truck is gonna take a fucking miracle. Can my friend Pete, can my friend Pete fucking do it? Can he fucking restore this truck? Yes, I can commit myself to restore it, but I am sick and tired of seeing scumbags like this fucking bozo right here, this fucking 100% authentic pile of shit fucking clown act ripping people off. The roof on that truck is fucked up. Up. You can literally tell that the truck has been rolled or some kind of action has been taken on this fucking truck. If I have to, I will send my hitman over there, right here. I will send this fucker over there to beat his fucking ass. I will take this cocksucker and I will threaten him with Axel the hitman. Plain and fucking simple. We're gonna call this cocksucker back in a motherfucking hour. There is no fucking way this truck is worth $4,000. 2000 This truck ain't even worth a thousand fucking dollars. He's a fucking pile of shit.
That's what he is. A pile of fucking dog shit. Kind of like the big dog shit pile of fucking shit you took this morning. That's what he represents. Do you agree? Do you fucking agree? He ain't getting away with it. The fucking scumbag is not fucking doing it. Plain and simple! So, what I'm trying to do now is negotiate a situation with this cocksucker to get half your fucking money back, at least half your money back. Yeah, he's, he sent me an email. I'll send it here. Okay, yeah. what did he say? Uh, he said um, uh, he, would, he would take the truck back. He said let's negotiate to take the truck back, but he hasn't got any money for 60 days, blah, blah, blah. What do you want to do? Uh, I like the truck and I don't want to go back to a dick like that. I, I, I usually don't go out on a limb like this. First of all, the thing I hate in life the most is a fucking liar, dude. As far as I'm concerned, when you fucking lie to somebody, when you fucking ball face lie, all you're doing is stealing from them. A liar is worse than a fucking thief, dude. And as far as I'm concerned, this fucking guy has lied from start to finish. It's turned into a personal situation that says I gotta get gratification out of the fucking problem of fucking making things go my way. Do you understand? what I'm saying. Have you ever been in that situation? Yeah, I have, yeah. Where you, you don't have nothing to do with nothing, and you're just the middle guy, but it gets so fucking far in debt that you say, you know what, fuck this shit. I gotta finish it out, because I started this fucking problem, and I'm gonna finish this motherfucker off. Go on, you, Pete. All right, All right, listen, bud. Make sure everybody out in Australia is watching my friend Pete. <laughs> I will. And I'll you pass the word. Time. And you pass the word around. <laughs> and you pass the word around. You don't fuck with my friend Pete. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty clear. All right, we'll see Bye. you later. Go on, you mate. Take care. All right, don't worry, dude. Right. Either way it goes, we're gonna get your truck running. All right, mate. And get on my website in about 30 minutes and go to latest projects. You'll see your truck on there and you'll see the pictures at the top. Oh, cool. Okay. That's good. All right, I'll see you later, Richard. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Uh, all right. this fucking angle of this fucking pickup truck this this Ford 1960 model fucking truck and what we got is a situation of miscommunication sticking it in the fucking ass taking advantage of people and using and abusing people to the limit to get what you want this all started with this guy out in Colorado that had this truck and this guy in Australia that loved the truck but you know what Mr. Colorado Kool-Aid guy cocksucker I'm sorry not Kool-Aid went one step farther and he emailed me some uh i guess emails of copies of emails that they emailed back and forth now what i have come to the conclusion of and i'm just going to read a couple little lines i'm not going to read the whole fucking email to you but uh i read the emails i guess he feels like he doesn't owe any money and everything he did was great and dandy and blah 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 so he sits there and he tells mr fuck off australia guy how many trucks he's got he's going through telling him what he's got and then he says i have trucks at least 50 mopars most are big blocks four ford he's got four fords three toys one international okay one's a uh, three toyotas one international two mitzis one isuzu and a nash so the guy's got a lot of fucking trucks now this is the kicker right here see because what we're doing here is we are working on the internet you understand this is where the internet thievery comes intact so the guy that is buying the truck is to fucking uh, Australia fucker out here in, you know, West, uh, Badlands of Australia. He emails the guy in Colorado, and he says, Hi there, Colorado cocksucker. Great to hear from you. I received the photos. Thank you so much. I'm definitely interested in picking up uh, the dual cab. This is the four-door. I gather from your email it runs. Okay, he said it ran, which helps a lot with shipping. Here's the fucking section that I want to read you real close here. This guy, Mr. Australia, is putting himself out into the world, and basically, and I I hate to say this to this fucking guy, I hate to fucking say it because I know he's going to watch this video, but he's sticking his own thumb or finger in his fucking ass. He is being honest.
honest with the guy, but on the other hand, he is giving a section of his knowledge away to the seller, letting the seller know, I don't know jack shit about these trucks. I'm gonna read it to you right here. It says, unfortunately, I got my finger right here, here we go. It says, unfortunately, I'm not actually very savvy with the trucks. I've always just loved the look of them. Can I ask what the difference is between a wide box and a step box? Is the step box the one with that looks like big wheel arches from the outside a bit more old school style if I were able to get the dual cab this is where another tray is there another tray uh, a tray in Australia is uh, translated to a bed truck bed uh, style available to fit not to worry though normal trays fit more I guess all right what he basically just told that guy is I don't know shit about these fucking things I am leaving it in your hands I am trusting you 10,000 miles away not to fuck me I am being honest with you telling you that I don't know the difference between a step side and a fleet side. I don't fucking know what it is. Do you see what I'm trying to say here? So, any con artist, rip-off thief, or somebody that wants to sell something 10,000 miles away is gonna read that email and say, hook, sink, liner, bait, fuck you, in your ass. Just like that. So, we come back, the guy emails him back, and he tells them that he, he evades the guy's question at first and starts talking about what he wishes he had, which is a DeSoto truck, blah, blah, blah. And then he tells him that I received a deposit from another guy on the crew cab. If he doesn't give me my money, then you can buy it for nine thousand fucking dollars. We got Mr. Colorado Kool-Aid cocksucker guy out there that has forwarded me these emails because he thinks he's being justified. In my opinion, Mr. Australia was being an upfront, honest guy, leaving it to him and saying, I am giving you nine thousand dollars for this truck. Be honest with me like I'm being honest with you. He didn't send any pictures of the roof. No pictures of the roof. But he says the roof is uh, a bit dented and it would take a good body man to fix it up in the time that it would take him to drink a six pack of beer. So if you drink beer and you're a body man, you could probably drink a six pack of beer on a Friday night. I don't know what, in a couple hours? A couple fucking hours? I'm gonna be honest with you, the top on that truck needs replaced. There's no way out of it. It's crushed, it's warped, it's tin canned, it's rotted, it's rusted, it needs a new fucking roof. Here he is going over this truck, how rare it is, and there was only 300 of them made, and blah, 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 and this, that, and the other, and he's trying to sell the fucking thing to the guy, which I don't think he had a deposit. I think he's full of shit, but that's just me, you know, thinking here. If this was me buying that truck, and I'm the fucking guy that got screwed in the ass, I would be taking a trip to Colorado right now, 800 miles away, and talking to this bastard in person. But me going 800 miles away to talk to this guy in person would be a waste of time, because I'm the middleman. I am the fucking middleman, and all I can do is do what I fucking do by using the right words, playing the fucking game, and hopefully this guy falls into our trap, just like Mr. Fuck Off Australia guy fell into his trap. So, we're gonna give this cocksucker a call, and I don't even know if he's gonna answer. I don't really fucking know if he is, but if he does, he does. Uh, I'm sure he's waiting on me to call him because he forwarded me these emails, and we'll see what he says. So here we go. Colorado Kool-Aid cocksucker guy in action. Afternoon. Have you got all of your resources, guy? Yeah, I did, as a matter of fact. What's going on? Um, well, I got a way to pay him for the truck back and come get it, um, cover the tires, and... Have you contacted Richard on that? No, I haven't. I've been waiting to hear from you. I'm going to tell you again. He wants to keep the truck, Phil. He wants the truck. He wants to negotiate. Listen to me. I'm helping you out here, pal. I'm, th I'm, th I'm going to be honest with you. I'm sick of being the fucking middleman on this shit, okay? Do you have the money to pay this guy back his money to get this truck back off the fucking my property and in your fucking junkyard? Do you have that cash? I can call you. I mean, yes. Okay, what I'm basically getting at here, I just want to make sure that I, I'm square on this fucking deal. Okay. You're willing to go ahead and just pay all his money back, be a nice guy, and say, look, you don't like the truck, let me just pay you, I'll, I'll get the truck back to me, I want to buy your tires from you, I'll compensate you for that, go somewhere else and buy the truck. Is that what you're saying, Phil? Actually, that and more. And here's the more. I don't like the way this whole thing turned out. I want to be reasonable. I'm the one that screwed off everything by not 
not answering the phone. Yeah, she did, Phil. Hey, but I'm going to let me tell you something. Go ahead. I'm letting you talk, bud. You're sounding like a good guy here. Oh, uh, you know what I mean? You're hearing me. I know that. I had to take off. You know, we are, I was awake at 4 o'clock just because I, I'm up that early. But you didn't call. By 2 o'clock, I had to leave where I'm at. By 10 minutes to 5, I left where my phone works. Okay. And I was gone because of the weather because I have a job to do. Okay, and I, Phil. I didn't even know if you called or not. Okay, Phil. Hello? <laughs> Hello? Are you there, Phil? Hello? Are you there, Phil? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. I didn't call you at 4 o'clock because you said you had to get a hold of your resources. I was letting you. Yeah, yeah. I was letting you cool. I was letting myself cool down for several days and, and letting you get a hold of your resources. Okay? Why should I call you at 4 o'clock in the fucking morning? Because I thought you were serious about it. I am serious about it, but I'm not gonna fucking harass. I'm not gonna call you and harass you at four o'clock in the fucking morning. Now listen to me. You're sounding like you're you're turning this around. You're being a nice guy, Phil. I appreciate that. You sound like you really don't want to fuck nobody in the asshole. You sound like you're not that kind of a guy. Okay. Okay. All right. How much do I need for the storage if it takes me another week to get it out of there? You don't owe me nothing, Phil. I'm gonna let you store it here for free. Okay. But, but you know what? You know. Uh, you don't owe me shit, Phil. Forget me. Okay, I'm just a nobody. I'm a fucking guy. That's all I am. I'm a fucking negotiator. I'm a fucking... I'm the middleman. I play the middleman game. That's who I am, Phil. Don't fucking worry about me. Don't worry about me. I'm the do-it-for-nothing guy, okay? I'll call you back. Oh, I'll call you back, Phil. I'm try I got an email, Richard. Tell him the fucking situation, and then he's gonna call you. Keep by your phone. He might call you in the next hour. Okay? Okay. What was the cost of the shipping? So I know. What was what? The cost. I know the guy just got twelve hundred. I don't know how much the shipping was. Was uh. The shipping for what? I'm going to reimburse him for having it shipped down there. Okay. Like, 900 is what I thought. Okay, listen to me. Uh, listen to me, okay? Uh, now, I'm going to talk in your behalf this time, all right? Okay. I think that if you give him his money back, let him cover the shipping shit. There's no sense you paying for the fucking shipping when... Y y y okay, I don't think you're liable for that, Phil. I think I think that if he takes it back, he'll be happy if he just gets his eight grand back. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to, can I ask you one more question? How much were the we? Uh, how much were the tires on that thing? What's that? The tires. How much were the fucking tires? Oh, Twelve hundred. Twelve hundred. We told me in an email. But how many pictures of it did he send you? He sent me uh, two or th I think two pit. Maybe he sent me four or five pictures. I don't fucking remember. Okay. All right, I'm looking at some pictures here where it shows the cab, and it shows uh, the side of the beds, and it shows the interior. That's all I got. I got five pictures here, dude. That's it? Well, I'll see this. Why are we arguing about this, Phil? Who gives a fuck? How much documentation you got? I am looking at it. I see that you guys emailed back and forth. You were stroking each other's dick for a while there, dude. I understand, bud. Okay? I get the fucking message, bud. Okay? You guys were in love with each other for a while. Okay? You had an internet fucking connection. I will call you back later. Okay? All right. Take it easy. Relax, Phil. All right, this is Pete. Uh, now, you've been sitting here for painstakingly for the last three days. I'm making this last video on this fucking bullshit truck. Mm. You've heard some of the conversation on it, am I right? Yeah, some. Okay, hello? I've heard okay, some. Okay, so yeah, what we got here is uh, Mr. Colorado Kool-Aid's turned his attitude around. Got a real drama show going. It's got it's a fucking funny. drama over here, dude. Uh, he has offered to give all of the guy's money back plus shipping. I told the guy, don't worry about the shipping. It's not his fucking gig to pay for the shipping. So the situation we have now is I've contacted Richard. We're not going to go into that conversation. We've got we've we've got four fucking videos on this deal. This fucking middleman operation going on here. This collection agency of Southwest uh, Paint and Body Ride and Custom. Uh, you know, whether Richard keeps the truck or not, or this guy gives his money back, I think they came to a negotiation of the situation is... 
This guy fucked up. Richard fucked up. They both fucked up. Richard gave himself away when he said, I don't know nothing about trucks. Give me a, you know, 10,000 miles. Did you catch that in the video? Yeah. All right. He basically threw himself at this guy in Colorado and said, I don't know nothing about trucks. But then on the other hand, the guy in Colorado, he threw himself back into Mr. Australia's lap and said, I'll give you a full refund. No fucking problem. Was the seller like got remorse or something? What's his deal? What do you mean? Got remorse. Feeling guilty? Feeling guilty about something? Uh, probably so. I don't know. Or maybe he's just trying to be a nice guy. All right, let me ask you this. Do you think my negotiation of me getting involved in the middle of it changed the, the, uh, the axis of the world on the situation and made it spin a different rotation to make everything work out properly? Oh, yeah. You jacked it real good. Well, okay. Yeah. So, will the truck stay here or will the truck go back to Colorado? We don't know, and the answer is not here yet. Uh, it's going to be right. It's going to stay here. Your Australian boy, he's got, he's, uh, he's trapped in your mind. Okay, well, uh, Colorado Kool-Aid guy has offered to give him a full refund plus. And Australia's already declined. Have okay, you? I have to, okay, the situation is we don't give a fuck. The situation we have is, is that whether the truck stays here or whether it goes back to Colorado, my friend Pete came through. It turned out to be a good situation, but it took a very long time to get it to that. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, warning you, telling you, and, uh, uh, throwing it in your face that if you want to be a middleman, be prepared. We'll see you later. Take it easy. 1960 Ford, four-door, big giant fucking truck. It's a story that might be here and a story that might not. We got to go to work. Son of a bitch, I'm getting too excited. I gotta go. <laughs>